are living in the world, your prayers are squeezed into morning or evening. You haven't much time. So you have to make your prayer very quick and very short. So in that sense, he is an auxiliary construction, something which occupies our mind and our heart to the exclusion of God. What about here? What about in the desert, in the mountain? There is nobody to tell me what to do. When I leave the monastery and come up here, I am without rule. If I want to sleep 19 hours out of 24, I can. Nobody will say anything. Nobody will know. If I want to, to daydream all my life, nobody will know. So the rule is internal. A desert monk, he must have an internal rule. He must have a discipline which comes from his heart. So this freedom, this solitary monk form, means that I am without distractions, without any anything which could inhibit me from coming close to God. as close to God when you are surrounded with what Freud called auxiliary constructions. You can never come as close to God when you are in the midst of many supporting things as you can when you are naked, when you are alone. So I would say that a monk has a privileged position in this race to know God because he has no distractions. It's like you've got a, a special path opened before you, like a royal road. You can travel this road to heaven. A monk, he sees before him prayers, the liturgy, the Holy Communion. He sees before him many, many years of undisturbed prayer. Our whole attention is following the life of Christ. We repeat his life in our life. Because our faith is our work. A monk's faith is his life and his life is his faith. This means we are all the time moving on the one railway track of, of Christian faith. Father Lazarus of the Coptic Orthodox Church. I have come from Australia. I am Australian. I was. My name is particularly relevant to my life because it means the one who is resurrected. So I chose this name both for its power of resurrection because I was not Christian all my life. I have become a monk 
and a Christian at the same time and uh, changed my life uh, you know, completely. So it was like I was dead and I came to life. Before I was a man proud of himself. I was sure that I am the captain of my ship and the master of my fate. I was sure that I am the one who determines my own destiny. Now, I believe that I am in the hand of the Lord. I believe that I have changed completely from being the master of my own life to being the, the, the loving son, the servant, the slave of Jesus Christ. This change from pride to, to humility, from independence to dependence, from adulthood to childhood, this is the, the complete change which has happened to me from before monasticism to after monasticism. This place for sleeping is like a tomb, you know, it's just, a, it's just a hole in the rock. So when I crawl in there to sleep, it's like I lay me down to die. Huh? If I wake, I wake. If not, I wake. <laughs> spiritual way but it's a humanly it's a lonely way but it's not easy monasticism is not easy at all why because not many monks have my have my I mean my position if you if you ask any monk in the monastery does he know where his father is does he know where his family are yes he knows very well and they visit him and he visit them and they are very close still if you ask him what is your what is your position here? I am Egyptian, I am speaking my mother tongue, and so on. You ask me, I'm an exile from my country, I don't speak my mother tongue with anybody, I don't have my family with me. All the things which help to make me a strong monk are losses. But for the other monks, they haven't lost these things. So they have to fight more. Uh, after I studied dentistry, there were many opportunities ahead of me, but in my heart, I have chosen to be a monk even before I graduated. Some of my friends and family members objected, saying I will miss out all the good things in the world, like having a family and being a good member in the community, but I believe I have chosen the right path. The challenge I face in the monastery the most is my attachment to my previous life, my friends, brothers, and the loved ones. Remembering them really challenges me. But me, all of this is cut off. So this makes me, uh, in one sense, blessed. But in 
another sense, I am utterly alone. If I want to, to talk to somebody, to whom can I talk? I have no language to talk to anybody. There's nobody who can understand my language. There's nobody here who has my past. There's nobody here who thinks my thoughts. If I lose my contact with Christ for one minute, there's nobody to come to help me. So this struggle, I must fight every day to keep myself balanced on Christ, balanced on the Lord. This is a struggle for me. I have reduced my temptations by coming here. I haven't any sight, any temptation by eye. I don't see women, I don't see money, I don't see alcohol, I don't see gambling, I don't see riches, I don't see anything which can attract me. I don't have nice clothes, I don't, nothing is tempting me by eye. By ear, I don't hear conversations, I don't talk, I don't have any temptation by ear. The only temptation is left for my heart to dream, to remember, to worry about myself. This temptation, and the devil uses this against monks very much, to make him dream, to make him look in himself and worry about himself. I cut it by the name of Jesus. I pray the prayer in Greek as I learned it. Kiri Yesu Christe eleis on me. Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me. And this prayer protects me like a shield. I just pray it till I become still. The stillness of the outside desert and the stillness of my heart makes the temptation, nullifies it, reduce it to nothing. The wish for a family, for a married life, for children, for the usual development of human life, this atrophies when you become a monk. For example, if you tie up one finger on your hand, and you never use it for three or four years, it will become useless, it will atrophy, it will lose its usefulness. The same with a monk, when he leaves the world and he gives himself to God, I mean, give himself completely, you put your, you say, I am in your hands, Lord. When you do this, the desire for other things atrophies, it falls away, you no longer want second-hand love. You want only the first love of the Creator, not the love of the created things. From the moment I came to the desert, I put all of that behind me and I looked only forward, and I looked only to the love which I got from Him. I cannot say I am alone. I am not alone. I am alone from human company. But human company is not what I am seeking. I am seeking spiritual company and I have it. And I am not alone. I never feel alone. From the beginning I knew that this was the place where I will find my salvation. It's like a, a window to eternity. I can see things here in the desert which I could never see if I was in a city, because the human life would be a barrier between me and heaven. But here I am open, heaven is open.